Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam wa la seed al-musaleen Amma ba'd fa'awdu billahi min shaitan al-rajim Bismillahi wa Salatu was salam waliki ya Rasulullah. Salatu was salam waliki ya Rasulullah. Wa ala alik was habiki ya Habibullah. Wa ala alik was habiki ya Habibullah. Salatu was salam waliki ya Nabi Allah. Salatu was salam waliki ya Nabi Allah. Wa ala alik was habiki ya Nurullah. Wa ala alik was habiki ya Nurullah. Viewers of Madri Channel, welcome to tonight with Madri Channel. Before we begin the topic that we're going to discuss today, we're going to give you a blessing of reciting Durud Pak upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam is reported to have said that on the day of judgment there will be no shade except for three types of people. Number one will be he who removes a worry from a fellow Ummati. Number two will be he who revives the Sunnah of the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. And number three is he who spends his time in reciting Durud Pak upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. Sallu ala al-Habib. Views of Madhuri Channel, we say it many times and we're going to continue to say it, but don't waste time. Use your time and one of the best ways of utilizing your time is reciting Durud Pak upon the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam. Who knows that one extra Durud Pak that you recite today might make all the difference on the day of Chichan. Views of Madhuri Channel, I was born in this country. I was brought up in this country. And I remember a time where the only addiction that we had was cricket. We used to play cricket and we used to play cricket until either one of three things would happen. One, we can't see the ball because it got dark. Two, we'd hit the ball over a, over a wall and we couldn't retrieve the ball. Or thirdly, we'd hit the ball onto a road and it hit an oncoming car and we'd all run away out of fear that maybe the driver was going to get out and chase us. But I also remember a time later on then that what happened was the computer game started to come. The home console started to come into our houses and we used to come home from school and maybe pay on the home consoles for a while and that would be it. and then we'd get back to our playing our cricket or riding our bikes or doing our homework and that was probably the last thing that we did. Then we had the introduction of mobile phones and I can remember having my first mobile phone in 1996 believe it or not. I remember at the time I was given a talk 15 plan and on this talk 15 plan I only had 15 minutes talk time every month. I didn't have any text messages and I never used them 15 minutes. And then gradually we got the introduction then of the internet and with internet at the time we had it where you'd had the dial up and everything and it was slow and you used it for specific reasons you used it for sending emails and you used it for doing some research for whatever what you are doing but in the last 10 years we've seen a technology explosion and as a result of that technology explosion we're now in a time where i remember Rukn Shura Ibrahim Bapu saying to me that there was a time where we used to think of an idea he was responsible for IT at that time we used to think of an idea and at that time we used to think of the idea and we think, well, you know, it's okay, but the technology is not there for us to do it. Nowadays, technology has advanced to such a state that you come up with an idea and technology is already there for you. So with the advancements of technologies, we, we're generating now a new generation of people and it's not just kids. And this new generation of people, they are becoming addicted to this technology. They're becoming addicted to what we now call smartphones. They're becoming addicted to what we now see as the internet. And the internet has progressed to where, places where it never was like that before. Our, our mobile phones are never like what they used to be. Our mobile phones were basically, that's what they were, they were a mobile phone and we used to use it for talking. But now that same mobile phone can be utilized for internet, for social media, for all sorts of things. And we end up, we're, we're creating a generation now of people where rather than being uh, going out and getting fresh air and sports or whatever, whatever it was, our youngsters and our youngsters, not only our youngsters, you know, when I say I was addicted to cricket, it was probably from the age of 12 and 14. Now we're creating a generation of people from the age of 6 to 60 who are addicted to their smartphones. They're addicted to getting onto the internet as much as possible. And I think if they had a, a thespi counter to count how many times they could get onto the internet, it would be amazing to see at the end of the days how many times they've linked, connected to the internet to check messages, to check things. But we want to discuss the internet today. We want to discuss smartphones today and the usage the positive uses and the negative uses. You know, with everything that is, you know, we've, we've heard Nigran Ashura, we've heard even Bapa say that like, uh, certain things are like knives. Uh, and a knife can be used for good things and for bad things. A knife can be used to cut an apple, but a knife could also be used to slit your own throats and kill yourself. 
So there's good and bad in everything. And I'm not going to say that smartphones are bad. I'm not going to say that the internet is bad. But here today, inshallah, with us in the studio, alhamdulillah, we have Harun Bhai who's been here every week, alhamdulillah. And we also have Wasim Bhai with us today. We just want to highlight some of the problems that we, we have, some of the fears that we have, some of the fears that we want to let our viewers know about so that they become aware of this and then they are aware of the facts and then they can act according to that. Jee Harun Bhai, with regards to the topic today. One of the fundamental things about this topic is that we all live in a kind of a bubble and in, a, in a, almost a mythical world when it comes to this because we don't accept readily that this device that we have in our hands or the internet generally has taken over our lives. And then those who do look at it and think, yes, this is, they pretend, and I, I'm not going to uh, pull my punches, they pretend that it's crucial to their existence, they cannot function in this society without the internet or a mobile phone, and so it's part and parcel of life. But is, is it, has it not become part of our life, that it has been crucial, it has become crucial? Do you you know, there was a time where, I mean, we look at the GPS devices, there was a time where I managed without them, now I can't manage without them. Colourie, you gave a beautiful example when we started that, uh, you know, you used to play cricket. And yeah. I didn't need the internet time, then. <laughs> at the time, when you were there and you were playing, we used to play all day, yeah. right? At the time, you thought, there's no better way to spend my time. Of what else would I do? I am just playing cricket. And what happens is it takes over the mind. Let's, let's have a reality check about this. Do we actually need this internet? And what do we actually use it for? For example, let's say that we didn't have it for a day. So it's not there. Okay. What would happen? Well, let me tell you what would happen. You'd probably talk to more people. You'd probably go out and appreciate the gardens. You'd probably appreciate the weather. You'd probably find out what's really happening in the world, what's happening in your household and everything else. Let me tell you the other um, kind of fallacy in this. You know when you speak to brothers, and you say, you know, did you get to the mosque? No time. Did you recite the Quran this week? No time. Some brothers who don't live with their parents, did you go to see your dad, your mother? Nope, no time. On our phones, for example, um, there is a, an app, and I know some of the Androids have this, and we see that what you can do is you can actually go in and find out where you've spent your time. And when you go in, the average person is spending an hour to two hours a day on things like Facebook, WhatsApp, Twitter, all these things. Now, let's say an hour a day, seven hours there, then people are watching television, and again, that's now internet. The terrestrial TV has disappeared. So you've got TV on demand, which is controlled by internet, and say they're spending an hour there, 14, 20 hours a week on, on these things. You ask the same person, did you have time to go speak to your elderly father? And he said, no, I didn't have time. 20 hours to waste browsing pages, but no, you ask the same person, have you had five minutes? I'm not talking about an hour. I'm saying five minutes to read the glorious Quran. And they said, no, I don't have time. And they, they tell you in a convincing way. They say, I haven't got time. And they genuinely haven't got time. Why? Because 90% of their spare time is wasted on these mobile devices. Well, why have we got this addiction? I mean, okay. It's, uh, I mean, I disagree with you in one point that there is good in it. We do utilize it for positive reasons. So I'm not going to say that, I'm not here to say that, you know, throw away your smartphones, disconnect your internet, get rid of Wi-Fi. Get, I'm not going to say that. But no, what I, I'm saying, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But, 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 okay, so why? Why, why? why has that become our priority? Why has that become our focus? Why are we spending so much time on that when, you know, all right, I used to love playing cricket when I was that age. I'm not fit enough to play cricket now, but I used to love going out and doing these sort of things. Why are we not doing it? Is it Ultimately, Khalid, but it comes down to having a balance. As with most things, there's got to be a healthy balance. Um, if, if we were to take the example of our relationship with food, when the balance is, 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 is incorrect, it means that we, we're eating far too much and not exercising enough. But yes. when the balance is right, we're eating just the right amount and we're having enough exercise, it's a healthy lifestyle. Uh, the same way with technology as well. No doubt there are benefits. Um, you know, to name a few, uh, if your family members are in another country uh, of, of the world, you know, the gone are the days when you would have to go and buy a phone card and go to somebody's house and, you know, dial up and, and make the phone call. You know, you can have a video call yes. and it's literally mm. crystal clear and you can have a 
fantastic conversation yeah. with them. You know, there are people who who don't complete their Nizami through the internet. Yeah. There are people who are learning. I mean, we have our mashwaras with, you know, our nigrans and, and all of these kind of things, which have been made possible by the internet. So no doubt there are advantages. <clears throat> but at the same time, I think as, as uh, sensible human beings, as uh, uh, responsible people, we need to understand the risks that come with it as well. Um, and, and I think this is what kind of Harun Bai was alluding to um, when he said that uh, sometimes I think we uh, perhaps get into this false sense of security that it's become a be all and end all of, of, of our existence, which it, which it isn't. And I just wanted to highlight some of the uh, some of the concerns, some of the reasons why we need to be very, very careful. You know, if you are finding yourself that you're having to check your phone um, every time when you get a spare moment, you know, if you're, if you're engaged in something busy for half an hour and you feel this urge that I've got to go back and check my phone, then that relationship is there is an imbalance. The, uh, the technology is controlling you more than you are controlling the technology. Uh, can you resist picking up that mobile phone? But, and I'll give you a scenario. But I'm going, I'm going on the, before you start, I'm going on the flip side where people say, well, I need to be in touch with people. It's part of my job. It's part of my business. I need to know what's going on all the time. And so, so that's why I'm checking I my mean, phone if, all the if, time. If, if, if it is, if it is because, you know, you're, you're in touch with a, an, a family member and you need to keep checking the phone. Okay, fair enough. If it is just for business, fair enough. But more often than not, it's not. And I'll give you an example. Um, and there's been lots of research done about this. I and mean, social media is one of the uses of, of, of technology. And, um, you know, this, this, this phenomenon that those of us who've had social media now or we've had it in the past, uh, when you post something on social media, um, now there's a, something created by, it's, it's on every social media platform, which is the, the like button. Yeah, whether it is a like or not is another debate. But the like button or the comment button. Now, what happens is, um, it, there's some psychology behind this as well, and there's been uh, some chemistry behind it as well, that every time you post something, especially if it's about yourself, and, and the research suggests that 80% of the post on social media is about the individual, about himself. Mm. Whenever you post something, especially when it's about yourself, there's um, an affirmation that you're looking for, yeah. for people to affirm and confirm that they like, like you. <laughs> now, and what happens is this is a drug. And, and I say drug because it's addictive. What happens is every time you go on the social media and you've had a number of likes, that releases a chemical called dopamine. Yeah. And that's addictive. Because the more you get it, the more you want it. It's, it and, gives and, it a good and, feeling. And, and, if, and we need to all ask ourselves these questions and views of Mother Channel at home as well. If it's that drug or that um, feeling inside you that's wanting affirmation, that's making you pick up your phone, rather than a family member or the business, which is a perfectly um, uh, justifiable uh, reason, if it's that affirmation that you're looking for or to check how many comments or likes that have gone on that post you've, you've put, mm -hmm. then in my humble submission, it's the technology that's controlling you and not the other way around. Right. And this, in my opinion, is what makes people, as soon as they've read their salam, to not okay. start doing zikr straight away, or to leave the Rushri for Ayatul Kursi is to go into their pocket Pockets and, 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 and to check the phone. In Ramadan, after two records of Taravi, you, if you had a camera on top of the Jama'at and you'd see how many people will straight away take their phone out and come back. But uh, Wasim Bay makes a beautiful point. In moderation, if used correctly, it is a tool. I, I accept what you're saying. The difficulty is that in the current era that we're in, 90% 5% of people are using this um, not for the right purposes. So if you've got somebody learning online, you've got a mabulla who's doing the beyond, etc. Beautiful. But in the um, disguise of pretending that we're all going to be doing good with this, we're doing all this wrong and all these sins are being committed by this. And there was a, a brother... There's an imbalance. There was, an imbalance. That, there was a brother I met in Arab Sharif. And taxi driver brother, and he only said to me, he said, um, I, I used to be on social media and everything. He was asking me about social media. And my uh, proud confession is that I don't do any of that. I've never done it. So I, when you said likes, the reason I was smiling was, don't know what it means, don't know what it does, because I don't do social media. But he says to me, he said, um, you know, I, was, I had a Facebook account. And when it started off, I thought, this is brilliant. People used to send me Talawat al Quran and everything else, and I used to go down and read all these Hadith and Mubarak and everything else. And then, as you scroll down, further down, there used to be all sorts of images and everything else. And in the initial phase, and this is very important to understand, I said, oh, no, 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 I used to go back to the Quran. 
And then gradually over time, I developed a habit over months where I used to look at all this religious stuff and then used to deliberately scroll down and look at the other stuff as well. And I gradually got into the habit of looking for this other stuff. And one day I came and I thought to myself, look at where the shaitan's taken me. Mm. He actually, I started off with this platform to look at, you know, listen to the recitation of the glorious Quran and look at the translation and everything else. But yet, behind it, the shaitan was actually basically building something else. And now I've got to the stage where I finish work and I'm scrolling through these pages to try and find those images or something which will give my nafs that kind of strength. And he said, that's it. I said, no. Nope. So he had a normal phone. He didn't have a smartphone. He said, what it is, I, I convinced myself that I can't live without this. Actually, what I needed, and this comes back to what you were saying, Mr. what we need is a phone to make calls. Right? Well, look, I mean, that's one option which is to go call Turkey on it. You're going to uh, say. Yeah, that, 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 that's one option. I, I, I think there is another option, and, and uh, it's come back to what I've said before, I think is to have the, uh, a healthy balance, and it's to understand the nature of the beast that you're dealing with. I think we often um, see social media and, and perhaps don't appreciate uh, uh, or analyze what, what we're seeing. And mm. I, another point that I want to make here is that social media is a completely different existence to reality. The problem is we assume social media is a reality in itself, which in my, again, humble opinion, it's not. I'll give you an example. So uh, social media is kind of a, a, a running script of your life, isn't it? Lots of people post pictures of where they've been and what's happened and what have you. What they bet. Yeah, but and, but what you've got to remember, I mean, that's just one thing, people giving you kind of yeah. a running thing. But, but what you've got to remember is the people who put pictures of their children, people who put pictures of their holidays and, and what have you. Now, that's a snapshot of somebody's life. People will put pictures of their kids when their kids have just got dressed in the morning, wearing most, you know, nice designer and, and laughing and joking and what have you. But we all know that that's not how your kid is 24 hours a day. Your kid is waking up you up 3 o'clock uh, uh, in the morning as well. Your kid is crying and throwing a, a tantrum. How often will you see a parent post a picture of their child having a tantrum on their social media? They won't. So what we often see is the best of somebody's the life. Yeah. We see somebody on holiday. We see somebody in a restaurant three times a week with their family. We see their kids being pristinely clothed and, you know, looking really, really happy. What we don't, we, so we see all the highs. What we don't see is the lows. And what that does is it creates a perception in our mind. Everybody else's life is great. <laughs> why are my kids not so well behaved? Why am I not eating in a restaurant three times a week? Why, why, you know, why don't I have these uh, amazing pictures? Why isn't my skin as, as good as hers or his? You know, and so this it creates a false perception, and that's another thing that again we need to have that balance, and we need to understand that the person is, is he, the, whoever is putting things out on their social media. You know, I want to use the word agenda, but there is a that is very carefully manufactured. That that's is 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 PR effectively, mm. and they're, they're, and so that's what as as users and consumers of this kind of uh, media, we have to have this understanding that that's a certain kind of lifestyle that's me. And and if you find get to the point that you're watching this and you're feeling depressed about your own life, then it's an imbalance again. Mm. Yeah. But the problem is, Rasim, so I'm going to come in oh. there. You know, you, you talked about the imbalance. The problem is, mashallah, somebody, you know, well-educated like yourself, who's had a, an upbringing in the Madni environment as well and everything else, will be able to see the dangers. So you may be able to think, well, look, I've got to control my use of the social media. So if I've got it, I mean, uh, call me weak. I, you know, this is what my, I was speaking to uh, uh, somebody and I said, you know, they said, why don't you do any sort of, I said, look, you're probably stronger than me. I'm not that strong, so I stay away from it because I can't, you know. So I said, I've never done social media and I don't do and it. I, the I, problem I agree is with you. This. I, I agree with you. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's very easy to say control it, but it's hard. I mean, I go through phases where I just delete it from my phone altogether because we, you, you end up there. What happens is you'll, you'll think to yourself, okay, well, I'm going to only uh, go on it every so often. But you find yourself, even on a day when you're so, so busy and you've got a massive to-do list, you find sometimes yourself, you make time to just check the, the latest yeah. updates on there. Yeah. I've seen people, you know, their parents have just passed away. And, be, and there's just something innate about this Khalid Bhai that you find that, that everything else is going wrong, but this is one thing that's consistent in your life, which is <laughs> you'll check uh, the latest updates. So I, 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 I think yeah, that will amazing. always be there. But for some people, I think it's become such a big part of their life. To ask them to, to expect them to delete or go cold turkey, I think is too much. Well, no, no, I, 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 I'm not I, I, advocating for that. The problem is, though, to highlight the danger of it. You see, if somebody like Khaled Bay or yourself who can kind of uh, analyze it, 
think about it and think these are the dangers of this so I need to avoid it fine you know somebody who can do that but the majority of the people out there don't have that capacity their life is now evolving around this so the constant pictures and I was shocked because I've, I've never done it and when somebody came to me and said look you know somebody we know what he's had for breakfast we know where he's gone there was one brother he traveled from here and at Manchester Airport he said traveling to Islamabad got there, landed in Islamabad, got out of the airport saying, just coming out, collected my bags, just coming out, came out and he said, right, we're going for a roti in flour restaurant. They went and parked outside and they parked their car with all the saman and everything in it. And they were sat in the hotel in the top with the window overseeing the road and people came and took the car. They couldn't do anything, right? And one of the questions that he said, Wallahu wa alam exactly, but one of the questions was, you actually put your exact timeline on there. And we know in, in this was in a, a town not far from here where the police said what had happened is that a family had gone out to a wedding and as soon as they left, people broke into the house. And before they got back, these guys, it's as if they knew mm. they'd gone. And what had happened is the family, as soon as they left, they said, right, we're on our way. Facebook, we're on our way to, you know. And then as they left there, they said, oh, beautiful wedding on the way home. And these guys knew, so wow. they picked it up and they, they, they timed the burglary exactly to time. So they left before they got there. And these are the dangers that people don't appreciate. And this, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, how many relationships are, how many, you know, the, we were mentioning earlier, the, the other dangers of this evil are so horrific. Well, another one, I mean, just relate to what you're saying there. Uh, I mean, you, a couple of episodes ago, you guys were talking about, you know, what our elders used to say. Mm -hmm. You know, our elders used to say, you know, if you have um, some good news or something, you know, don't go around telling everybody. Yeah? yeah. You get nazar. Or don't tell everybody, you know, you don't want people to think you're showing off. Well, I think those days are, are long gone when you don't need to tell anybody. The, you know, the, the, you the, told everybody. The, the first thing will happen is you'll put a picture of it on your on your social media. And that, that's another thing as well. You know, everybody who's <laughs> seeing this, are they genuinely happy for you? Are they going to be happy? Do they need to know? Hmm? Do, do just a couple of things to pick up on what you've both said just now. That one example there of the robbery, I remember reading some cases of where, uh, you know, first day at school. Yeah. And they take a picture of the kid going first day at school, taken to school. And because it's the first day at school, that was uh, an ideal day for these people to come and kidnap their children. And there's been so many cases where people put in first day at school and they put it on there. And so again, we, you know, like you said, this personal information that we put out there can have loads of consequences, not just from your financial consequences, but all sorts of other consequences that, you know, I'm at home, everybody's gone, and there's just a, a female at home or kid dropping off at school, or all sorts of things. And I think we mentioned earlier on those, uh, a new terminology that's happened in the UK. What is it, what would we, we thought about it? What was it, revenge porn? Where people are, you know, taking pictures of each other whilst they are together, or, and it's happening here at a limited amount. And I think Vasimbai was saying earlier on that, in, in Pakistan and places like that, it's happening a lot more where people are being- uh, Blackmailed. Emotionally blackmailed on, on social media, or, uh, convinced to a certain extent where pictures are being taken and then afterwards then pictures are being emotionally blackmailed. So again, there's this, you know, it is a whole scenario of things that could happen. And one thing that you did mention earlier on though, I want to pick up on is, you mentioned that, and I can't remember the chemical, that, that chemical reaction that you have where you have Don't the light. Me. Okay, yeah. that's one th one side of it. But then I, I was thinking as, as, as you were saying, that, what about the flip side of it that, oh, I put a, put a video on and I've got, you know, 500 likes. I've got a video and I've got 500 now put a video and I've only got 20 likes. Mm -hmm. Now I've got it. It's the negative side of it as well. Yep. So that will also have a negative effect on the person that he's looking for that affirmation, but then what happens when he doesn't get it? See, this is the thing with any drug. It's um, when, when you've got the highest wine, it's when you come to the yeah. low. And that's what happens with these the, these kind of scenarios. And, and, and even if you a, a person wants to maintain 500 likes is one thing, but what, what happens is with most drugs is you always want a bit more. Yeah. You want the next kick. So when you start out, you're getting 50 likes and that's, wow, okay, I'm doing well here. Yeah. But after the bit, 50 likes won't quite do it. You need something else. I need to do something different. Yeah, you need engagement and you need people to comment upon you and you need people to stop you in the streets saying, yeah, I saw that thing on, on Facebook. You need so something it, more unique. Yeah, and, more it, and it grows and it grows. Is this just your grows. friend's circle though? So if, if you put something on, your friend's circle would see it and then say like or not like. Nobody can see it generally. No, no, I mean, it, it depends on what kind of platform. It depends on what kind of social media platform it is. On your, on your right. privacy settings. Yeah. I, 
Like, I mean, there's another thing as well, I mean, because we're highlighting some of the risks and concerns. Uh, I think something that is a, perhaps a more recent trend, and it's not necessarily, well, I think it applies to all social media platforms, is about um, filtering what kind of content we put on there. And I say this in, in light of kind of recent events as well, but also more generally. You know, if there's a, a video clip of people being killed, if there's a video clip of, uh, you know, a fight, for example, or people hurling abuse at each other or family dispute or whatever. Isn't it amazing how those kind of video clips go viral on social media? Mm. Yes. And, and I guess the question that we need to, because I mean, look, we're, we're part of the same, uh, I say that because I'm, I'm receiving these from people, right, clearly. And, and these are people within my uh, uh, list of contacts. And uh, many viewers at home watching right now will have probably seen horrific videos in recent weeks of people being murdered. Uh, will have seen uh, videos, um, and many people might have forwarded them as well, or will have seen videos of um, some guy being be be beaten up, or uh, someone being knocked down in the road, mm. you know, lots of examples. Now the question we've got to ask ourselves is, that if that was my family, mm. if that was my, uh, I saw one video a couple of weeks ago of some young, uh, from near where I live, some young girl that was leaving school and she's hit up, forced by a car, and you know, and, and it was sent on a lot of groups. And I just asked the question, I says, um, you know, if we were her, if that was her, if you were to ask her parents, even in, in, in the name of health and safety, you create an awareness. But if that was my child, would I want that to be shared mm. on so many different platforms? I mean, we don't know what happened to that uh, a child. And, you know, um, if that child was seriously injured or even passed away, would those parents want their child's lasting, you know, video to be plastered all around social yeah. media? If, uh, and look, you know, a bad time can come, come on anybody, Khalid, by yeah. uh, That's an important, because the other one that really comes to my mind is this. If, in the olden days, there used to be three or four people in a room, and they, there would be some perhaps, you know, shouldn't be, but lying or backbiting or something like that, or tale telling or, you know, uh, profanity. Now, when at the press of a button, so say, for example, one person was backbiting and two people were listening. So he gets the sin of two people listening as well. But if you're now sending that out to 10,000 people, you get the sin of sending it to 10,000 people, don't you? And then if they share it with another 5,000, and it's all a lie. I think it's extremely, I think, and it speaks volumes for, for where we are, I think, now as a, um, as a society or whatever. I personally, this is my, I think it's disgraceful. I think it's disgraceful that, you know, um, oh, there's this clip come out about this so-and-so, uh, you know, even Ali Medin, so-and-so speaker, so-and-so celebrity, uh, this well-known family, you know, and and um, those videos are made viral. Yeah. You know, a bad time can come on anybody, Khalid, by me, a, 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 any individual. Would we want people to be forwarding, I think you know, a compromising... Things, there's, there's two things, though. There's one where you have the... Um, accident or you have the fight or you have the shooting or anything like that then you've got the other one where you're exposing someone's sin mm. and I think what people really need to realize is one is, is mm. committing a sin is one thing but exposing someone's sin is a sin as well yeah. and I think we fail to realize that and I, I agree with that that in recent times we you know anybody's committed a sin and, and the whole social media is there to expose it and let people know and I think that everybody that is exposing this sin is actually committing themselves a sin as well. It's like there's no filter. Yeah. But then on the other side, the other thing that uh, comes to my mind was, you know, I, and you, you, you briefly mentioned, and I think all our viewers know which video you're talking about where the, the, the shootings took place. When I watched that video, I was, I was horrified. But at the same time, you know what I saw when I was watching that video? I saw computer games that my nephews are playing. And, I, and it's just kind of like, I'm yeah. thinking, you know, how are our kids getting desensitized hmm? by playing these computer games that it's the norm? You know, it's the norm to knock people down. It's the norm to shoot people. It's the norm. And it's just, you know, it, it, to stop it, it actually looked like a computer game. You know, I, I, and, and my mind was trying to filter it out that, no, this is not real. This is a computer game. This is not. But it was real. But then are we not desensitizing ourselves? And so our kids that are playing these games on the Internet, the, the games where you are going around and the aim is to kill people and to shoot people and to knock people down and to maim people and, and that is the success of the game. That's where you get the golden point, so to speak. Are we it's not creating a, a nation of people that is desensitized? It's a, it's a very interesting thing you say because 
linking to our topic, basically, the youngsters these days don't think carrying a knife or stabbing somebody is a big deal, and is one of the reasons that in most of these games, knife is a secondary weapon, which is only there as a last resort. As a backup. As a backup. For all you know. the other weapons. And so, it, it, after all the other weapons. So, it's not that really big of a weapon, no. and that's why they belittle it. You know, and are we creating a society where, you know, we're encouraging this? And, you know, kids are spending six hours a day fighting with, uh, with a knife on, obviously, what now is virtually reality, isn't it? Yeah. You look at the games in our time. I'm saying the you technology little... is there where it is, it is virtual and it looks so real. It looks so real. But on, on, on the other point you mentioned there as well, I think there's a, a wider point. If it's not just related to technology, but you know, something that our religion, um, uh, the religion of Islam, places a great emphasis on, and that's hiding yes. uh, other people's faults. Yes. Uh, you know, we should always think mm -hmm. to ourselves that uh, no one's perfect. Not I even, have many faults. Not even Allah your, own fault, your own fault, you see. Committing a sin is one thing. But telling people about your sin is another sin, sin in itself. <laughs> but, but I, yeah, but I, I, and that's tell, that's me telling my own sin, but um, exposing your sin. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's something inherently uh, very, very distasteful about that. Exposing the, you know, the, the word expose itself. But again, it's become again, that has become a drug as well. Where people, we've we've, we've become. A, but isn't it sad how we've got to this stage? We, yeah, we've become a, we've become people now where we go out and we look for. Dirt on people. Yeah, yeah. We we we're, we're looking for it. We're searching for it. And you know, some people send me these things, and I'm thinking, how did you find this? Exactly. Yeah. How, Precisely. You know, I, I, how but, long have you spent looking for this? Yeah. But I think what we must realize as a community and for viewers of Madrid Channel at home as well that look, Allah Taala has, has has hidden my sins. You know, Allah Taala has put purda, purda over uh, my sins. If I am part of the and part, we're part of the change in the sense that we've received this video about somebody. And there's two things, options we've got. We've got a choice to make. Either we tell somebody else or forward it on a group or show it to somebody. Or that's option one. Option two is delete the damn yeah. thing and tell the person who sent you it, please don't send me anything like this in the future. Yeah. And it's only when we start doing that. We, I mean, this is a start, creating awareness. I mentioned this in my bayan sometimes as well. You know, people are often forwarding videos of people's sisters and mothers and, you know, whatever, whatever the situation. But in again, any you, know, sort you mentioned at the beginning that likes. People get a kick out of it. People get a kick out of being able to, I find this video first, yeah? And so I've sent it, and now I see it going everywhere. I see it going to Harun by Harun by sent it to Vaseem by Vaseem by sent it back to me, but I was the source of it. And they get a kick out of this, that I was the source of all this, I don't know, what's the word, virality? Or I don't know what the, 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 the viral... You guys are both kind of, you've kind of looked into this, obviously, and you, you've used it, and mashallah, in a, you know, uh, in a controlled way. Do these people not have a life? Because their life seems to evolve around, yeah, what other people think of what they're doing and what other people are doing. So I, I assume from what I hear and, you know, that everything they do, they stick on social media. So I've gone to the shops today, oh, I've gone shopping. I've, I've, I've had a glass of water there. with bubbles in it. That's on social media. That's on social media, yeah. So they'll stick everything. And then they will then read, I assume, what Wasim Bai is doing, what Khalid Bai is doing. So is that the extent of their life? Uh, I uh, no, I, and, and to say that that was it, I think would um, uh, perhaps you know belittle the, the the issue. I mean, these are people with jobs, but but um, but, but again, it does it does uh, lessen the social skills that they that they feel that this is the form of interaction. They 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 haven't got that you know going out meeting people talking to people. They spend more time. Yeah, you'll see that. that way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you were to take like a snapshot of a, a train journey from 20 years ago. Oh yeah. A lot of people would either be reading a book or talking to each other. Yeah. Mm. Whereas now, if you were to it's take not, a snapshot, they're all on there. But, yeah. And, yeah. and you, I mean, t take a snapshot of like an airport, yeah. people waiting to board their plane, or of any... Take a snapshot of a family yeah. <laughs> sat at yeah. running. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, it's in, in, for, for a lot of people, and you know, maybe we're part of this sometimes as well, it's, it's quite comforting sometimes. Because if you're stood on your own somewhere, and you've not immediately found somebody to talk to, the easiest thing to do, rather than looking like you're a loner and you're a nobody, the easiest thing to do is make yourself look busy and just pull out the phone. Okay. Yeah. The easiest way to avoid a difficult conversation is to present, pretend you've just received a really important text message. Yeah. There's so a lot of psychology it, behind like these things. It's like a comfort blanket. It has. It absolutely has. And again, I mean, we, 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 we can't just discuss problems, we've got to talk solutions. You know, my, in, in, in my opinion, I think it's just got to be about the balance. We've got to create a balance. And some, you know, you'll have to do things, uh, uh, set rules for yourself. When I'm inside the masjid, leave the phone at home. Yeah. 
when, you know, when I go to read my namaz, mm. or when I'm inside the masjid, the phone goes on silent and it stays in my pocket. It, it just doesn't doesn't come out. Is and it, with starting with things like that, we'll hopefully try to um, uh, make the relationship a bit more balanced. I can see how your suggestion will be more effective, and I can see how it can be kind of used as well. I'm perhaps going to go a slightly different way. The, the reason is, I don't think that there's any great good for the normal public. And so the best way to help control it, because it's like a drug, and it's probably more powerful than any drug that you get in the back streets. And so because it can be misused and it's destroying lives and hundreds and thousands and millions of lives, and the people who are benefiting are perhaps 3%, and 97% are making their life a misery and getting into the life of sins, I would say that anybody in their right mind needs to start to look at it very seriously. And now it's getting to the stage we've seen by where the person who created the internet is saying, hang on, this has gone all haywire. The person who created the internet. You know, you've got globals, the big companies who are running social media sites saying, we have to restrict him. You've got big companies saying, right, you can only forward a message so many times now, we're restricting everything. Why? Because they are recognizing and the governments are recognizing that this is a beast that yep. is totally out of control. And so, as, as especially for our audience at Madni Channel, what I'd say is this, you are trying to, and I can see where you're coming from, it's a logical suggestion, because you have to deal with this, the problem you've got in front of you. But from my mind, the, prob the, the solution to this problem is to close it off. Now, you say cold turkey, but unless you are using it to check your emails or to, for work or anything else or something serious, try and live without it, and it will change your life. You will get your life back. And that's what I would honestly say, that a lot of people have lost touch with reality, they've lost touch with their children, their parents, their family, husband and wife are not speaking to each other, they're, they're sat there at the same table, texting away on their phones, and they don't speak to each other, you know, and at night, the, the olden days, the, the, the uh, pious predecessors, they used to read a beautiful book before they went to sleep, and during their sleep, they used to have beautiful dreams. Now... We're checking news and we're checking this and that before and that we go affects to your sleep as well. And That's then it affects problem. your sleep as well. It causes depression, it causes family problems. So in, in my mind, the solution is simple. Um, don't turkey. try and control it. Just get rid of it. You can live with it. We've got a call dinosaur. now. Uh, Dr. Zirak, who was here with us last week, he's recorded some Madhuri Pearls with regards to this particular, particular topic. If we can just uh, listen to the Madhuri Pearls from Dr. Zirak, please. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Zira Qatari, uh, calling from Leicester. Um, tonight with Madni Channel, you have uh, brought another very interesting uh, topic, uh, which uh, is of great concern. Um, and the use of smartphones and especially social media and the internet um, is uh, causing a lot of uh, problems uh, for everyone, and especially youth and children. Uh, very recently, uh, psychiatrists have been given a guidance by Royal College of Psychiatrists, which is a governing body, that whenever uh, we see children for uh, assessing their mental health, we should ask them uh, specifically about the use of uh, social media and internet, uh, because uh, um, it has been obviously proven through research that uh, use of social media via the smartphones and internet uh, is causing multiple problems. It's affecting their mood, it's affecting their behavior, it's affecting their sleep, it is affecting the relationships, and clearly there is impact on the uh, children in terms of aggression uh, as well. And uh, the government here in UK is going to publish uh, some guidelines where they are actually going to uh, uh, make it uh, mandatory to actually observe these companies, the internet companies that put content on uh, um, social media or they allow other people to put content on social media to actually introduce restrictions um, uh, because of all these damages and the consequences of uh, harmful use. There is a long list of mental health problems uh, that uh, can be the result of uh, uh, you know, the content that is accessed by the children and adults alike and uh, very commonly, uh, uh, you know, the images, the news that you read via easy access to the internet, via smartphones, it can lead to anxiety and depression and uh, uh, panic attacks and so forth. 
So overall, my request to all viewers of our main channels, those who use uh, smartphones, social media, and especially the parents, is that they must supervise their children and they must restrict the time that they spend. And most commonly, parents allow their children to use these, uh, um, you know, more smartphones uh, because they don't want them to cause any trouble. Uh, but all I'm saying is that you are actually um, leading to bigger troubles in the future for these children and yourself as well. Jazakallah, Dr. Saab. I think there's some interesting okay. points that Dr. Saab makes there because, um, like Wasim Bhai said, controlling the adults on how and how they use it is always difficult. But with the children, when it comes to things like gaming, I mean, I'm, I'm not in favor of children being on social media sites where they share things and all that because of all the issues with bullying and grooming and all that and those are all real issues where you know children are being led astray by you know people who are a lot older pretending to be children and all that and you've just got on that i remember reading uh, by that whenever you log on to the internet at any time 24 hours a day there are 500,000 sexual predators logged on at any one time wow. and why would anybody in their right mind expose their children to that? And the problem is what Dr. Sab said at the end there. What happens is this. The child's at home. He's running up and down the stairs. He's doing everything else. You know, eight, nine, ten-year-old. And he says, can I, can I have the phone? And you, you give him the phone. He's got the internet. It's all open. And he'll sit there for three, four hours. And not say a word. Babysitter. And that's it. I have found the solution to all my problems. The solution to my problems is that when he's not behaving, give him the phone and he'll be quiet for the next four hours and I can get on with my work. What you don't realize is that that phone is destroying him. Not only is it physically destroying him because it causes mental difficulties and like Dr. Sab said, all sorts of issues, eye strain, etc. But more importantly, you are indoctrinating into this young child's brain that the answer and life revolves around this device. Now, this is the danger, Khalid, and this is what parents don't understand. And, you know, I would appeal to Madhvi Channel viewers and say this. When the child is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you pretend that you're going to give them the phone, but they're only going to play games. That's the, that's the justification, don't they use? Yeah. They say he's playing a game, he's not on the internet. The problem is, that child is now getting used to using the phone for two, three, four hours a day. Okay, at the moment, that child is you playing games. And the, 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 let's accept they're innocent, completely normal games, say spending a long time. When that child gets to 12, 11, 12 13, 14, 15, 16, the danger is having spent four, five, six years of two, three hours on the phone, when he gets to that age, he's not going to be doing, he's not going to be gaming. That phone has become part and parcel of his thinking, his life and everything else. And that's where the social media kicks in. And then the whole internet opens up for him. And he thinks, oh, this is a whole new world. And by the time he gets to 16, Khalid he's already destroyed himself with all the filth that's out there, with all the dangers that are out there, with all the, the nasty things you can buy and everything else. And he's indoctrinated his mind. Now, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi says that this was a child who was like a blank sheet of paper. You could write anything you wanted. And what you've done is handed that child over to the forces on the internet. You're using Mother's Channel. Um, you're watching tonight with Mother's Channel. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Show us the power of the week, please. What does it say? Bitter pills may have blessed effects. Look, the the topic we were discussing was social media and its use. And Mashallah was seen by, you know, gave some very beautiful muddy pearls. And his solution was to control more. My solution, especially where youngsters are concerned, is more to uh, abstain from it. Now, bitter pills may have blessed effects. It's not easy to take a phone off a youngster and say you cannot use the internet. What they might say, especially the 10, 11 year olds, is, are you serious? And they'll kick up a fuss. And that is, it's, it's difficult, and they may say things, and it's, it's difficult to kind of deal with that, but the effects of that will be amazing as that child grows up. Basically, as I say, it's like a short-term pain. Long-term gain. Long-term gain. And I think that's, I mean, that, that particular proverb, uh, as you say, with regards to this, it's a matter of controlling our children of what usage they have. And so many times I see that, like you say earlier on, that it's become 
a babysitting device. It's become uh, a way of just people being quiet in the house. And someone said that if you, you know, people have got big houses nowadays and the kids are all in the separate bedrooms. If you want to get them all together, you know, call for them, they won't come. If you want to get them all together, switch the Wi-Fi off and they'll be all in the room straight <laughs> away. All in the room. They'll all come down straight away. So it's become, that has become so central to our life. But like, like the proverb says, bitter pills may have blessed effects that they do. And it's the same, and you can, you can apply that to many, many aspects of our life. Be it the child that at a young age, you force the child to get out of bed for fudger, the child doesn't like mm. it, the child complains. Be it that child that you, you say to that child that you need to fast during this one. So you, you're training that child at a young age. It's hard at that time. Uh, you, 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 feel, you feel as if you're being hard on that child at that time. You feel as if you're being tough on that child at that time. But that bitter pill that you're giving to that child at this time in their life, where they need that training, later on, inshallah, it will have blessed effects. And inshallah, that child will become a pious child. There's a deeper kind of meaning that's come to mind in relation to our topic today. You know, you were discussing social media and how it leads people to these highs and then a lot of lows and then there's depression and then the problems with backbiting and family feuds related to WhatsApp messages or something like that. Well, just look at the last year or so and look at all the problems that these social media sites have created in your life and look at the highs. And you wrote them down. I am pretty sure the, the, the highs would be very few. But the problem but the is, low, right? the, the lows that you say, the problems that you say, people don't see them as problems. People don't see them as lows. That's, that's the problem. Is they, don't, they don't see it as a problem. They just see it as a high. They don't see all them problems. They don't see the problems. I'm sure they been. must have had occasions where this has backfired or they're looking for the lights and everybody said, I dislike you or whatever, however it works. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like it, it was seen by mentioned earlier on that people are looking for the likes. Yeah. If people were honest with themselves, if the viewers of Madani Channel right now were honest with themselves, they are looking for their likes. But if you ask every one of them, are you looking for the likes? Are you looking for how many likes you've got? Are you looking for how many views you've got? No, nah, no, nah, we're not bothered. We just, you just want to let our family know what we're doing. We just want to let our... They're not looking for the likes. They'll, they will say that. But deep down, there is that, that. So nobody again admits, oh, there wasn't enough likes. There wasn't people looking at it. There wasn't this. They won't admit to that because... They'll say, well, that's not my intention. What I was going to say, though, is this. All the troubles that social media has caused you, it's, it's, a, it's not an easy thing to say, but if you turned it off, try a week without it. Yeah, but what, again, you see, a lot of people, I mean, I'm playing the devil's advocate here, am I with you, is a lot of people don't see the problems. They don't see what the problems are. I mean, we've, we've, we're running out of time, really, on this topic, but it's something like you said at the beginning, and when you said at the beginning, I thought, you know what, he's right. This is not a one-hour topic. This is not a one-and-a-half-hour topic. This is a week topic. Because people don't see the problems. We've not even, I've got lists here of all the problems, cyberbullying, you know, posture where people, you know, are holding the phone in that position for two hours and afterwards the hands get stiff and all sorts of problems. There's driving, so many physical texting. problems. Driving while texting, accidents that are happening, all sorts of problems that we're seeing, you know, we're seeing of bullying, we're seeing of, of you know, uh, revenge porn, we're seeing of all sorts of problems that we're seeing, you know, bribing people, you know, and then people, you know, regretting things that they put on there later on because at that time they felt, differently hmm. and later on the visit regretting what they said regretting what they did regretting what they showed all these things are, are happening and we're not even touched on them but deep down majority of people don't realize that they're making these mistakes but isn't it like the, don't you judge the, the danger and then look at the solution so if the danger was small say for example the danger was static shock yeah you'd take some precaution but if you get static shock it doesn't matter does it what if the danger was electrocution and death by electrocution? You take well, further precautions. Now, with this social media, because it's so dangerous. But is it? I, I, I would say it is. It's you say destroying it is. life. You say it is. But well, the let's, picture, let's, let's get the viewers of Madly Channel to see send it as a message. danger. They see it as, it's like, you, see, see, the, the, you see, what they'll say is, and this is the case with everything. Majority of people nowadays, yes, I agree with you, Harun, by, yes, it is a danger. Yes, it is a danger. And you can talk about social media. You can talk about any problem in society. Yes, it is a problem. It's not affecting me. I, I, it's not affecting me, Harun, by. No, no, no. Mm. It'll be affecting him. It'll be affecting him. It'll be affecting, but it's not affecting me, Harun, by. So people will admit to the dangers. But how many of them out there that are watching right now will admit that these dangers are affecting them? That is the problem. People will not admit that this problem, you know, when people have got a problem, the biggest problem is admitting that you've got a problem. Whatever the problem is. <laughs> that is the biggest problem. True. Yeah? You, you look at people that have got problems with children, the upbringing of the children. Mm. For them to admit that they've got a problem, 
is is a huge problem. Yeah. They don't realize that the children are going on the wrong. They don't realize what they're doing to the children. They don't realize that this is happening. And so they don't realize that they've got a problem. They think that everything's okay. Yes, these problems exist. They're existing next door. They're existing over there. They're existing with Harun Bai down the street. They're existing with Wasim Bai in the other town. But not with me. Mm. Yeah, I'm immune to this Harun Bai. It's not affecting me, Harun Bai. I ain't got a problem with this. Yes, Harun Bai, you are right. But I'm okay. I can carry on with my social media because it doesn't affect me. I can take a picture. I was tempted, actually, to take a picture of this glass here and just put it on social media live and think, you know, see how many likes we get just out of interest because <laughs> this is what's happening here. And, and I remember, uh, you know, with our, with our uh, Darul Medina, on our Darul Medina, we have an Islamic schooling system. And one of the things that people did with the parts of it is they teach the children the, the problems with the internet or the, the, how far the internet can go. And I remember one teacher, she took a picture of something simple, it might have been just a glass of water, took a picture of the glass of water and put it on the internet and said, all the people that see this, please tell me where you are, right? This is an experiment that we're doing within our class to see the effects of the internet. Harun by that picture of something simple like a glass of water was all over the world. You think of all the countries, some countries that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> this picture got there and this, I'm in this country, I'm in this, and I'm going, wow. And it was like, it literally spread, you know, we use the term wildfire beyond that, viral, and all of a sudden within, I saw it, I was just watching it within minutes, all the people, I'm in Australia, I'm in New Zealand, I'm in Angola, I'm in this place, I'm thinking, wow, you know, and this is, this is what the internet is, this is what social media is, and people are looking for that, as we're seen by said, they're looking for that cake, they're looking for that people to say, yeah, you know, my message is all over the world, my video has been watched all over the world, yeah, oh, you wow. know, and, and people, you know, uh, people, you need to question your intention, right, even the mobilics, of David Slami, when we put things on the internet, we need to question our intention. What is our intention for putting things on the internet? Well, you see, that was what I was thinking. I was trying to find the, the, the exact narration. It, it, it's uh, the rationale of which was that Hazrat Musa alayhi salam asked in the court of Allah, Ya Allah, what reward do you give for somebody who gives, who invites to good and forbids evil? Yes. And the reply came that for every phrase, there is a year's worth of worship. Yes. Now, if that was the, you know, uh, the intention. You, intention yeah. when you put a message out to say for example you can use this in a beautiful way say you're on social media and if you send out a message at all fajr time you know that fajr time finishes at this time and send it to a thousand people what if you know 500 of those got up and prayed but then the, the flip side of it is Arun Bhai's people say Achha. so he's telling us oh, he's up for fajr is he he's showing off so there's, there's that flip side to it as well so again you know People don't no, appreciate it, it. It doesn't matter though. If you've got the right intention, yes. you see, obviously, um, Riyakari and um, showing off is what's in your mind. So if you've got the right intention, so if you get up every morning and say, I'll send this to 200 people, I'll use my social media contacts and I'll make sure I send the dars, I'll make sure I give them David to the Ijtama, I'll tell them where the Madani Kaf lies, I'll send a message out saying Islamic Sisters Ijtama is here, I'll send them a message at 4 o'clock on Saturdays to say the Madani Mazakra is happening. And then that is spreading all yes. over the world. What a great tool that is. It is if it's used that way. And people do use it. There are people out there, genuinely. I mean, I get, I get a message from, uh, from a brother every Thursday night after the Ishtama of the Durud Park that we should read. So, Maybe you missed reading these today, Halad Bhai. Here's a, and he sent me a picture of the Durud Park that we should read. Yeah? I get it every week. It's, he doesn't send me any of the messages. <laughs> right? He's probably watching now. He doesn't send me any of the messages. Uh, Salam, maybe you for, maybe you didn't have the opportunity to read this this week, and he sent me them through the bus. That's all I get from Alhamdulillah every week, yeah. And there are people that, and I get, I get one brother that sends me a message every single day, right? He's in Dubai. He sends me every day a message with the Hajjat. Every single day, it might be, a day, and it's different time zone, so it's not actually out the Hajjat, but his intention is there, yeah. So, uh, every single day, he doesn't does send me any other messages. He's a businessman. He's got a lot of th other things going, so he could be promoting his own business, but he doesn't. So yes, you are right, it's with the right intention. So what we're saying, Harun Bhai, is social media, smartphones, internet, all of these things have their pros. Yeah? They have their benefits if they're used in the right way. And like we've seen by said earlier on, it's getting the right balance, isn't it, Harun Bhai? If you get the right balance with everything, anything in your life, yeah? anything in your life, get the right balance, whatever it is, whether it's work, whether it's time at home, whether it's money, People get the wrong balance where all they do is earn money and they don't do anything else. Mm. Yeah, people get the uh, wrong balance where they don't spend time with family. That again is the wrong balance. So it's about getting the balance in no, life. I, I, I agree with you. If this social media was used 
for the work of the if this social media was used to give dars. So for example, you've got Miraj Sharif coming up. Social media is used to give dars in relation to that. If you use your phone, to, for example, the example that Wasim I gave when you've got a moment, you, you're reading a risala that you can download from dawatislami.net for free, and you've got all these risal there, which most of us have got on our phones. So you've got 10 minutes. Okay, I'll read something. I'll learn a sunnah. I'll, I'll, I'll read a hadith mubarakah. Our um, online courses. Dawat Islami provides all these online courses that you can do in your time, wherever you want. 10 o'clock at night, 2 o'clock in the morning, you give it the time, Dawat Islami will provide the course for you. And you've got a list of courses to choose from. That's using it correctly. Islamic sisters can now sit in the comfort of their own homes and do whatever courses they like online with Islamic sisters providing them. Yeah. And so, with all of this, you can use it in such a positive way. You can change. The, I mean, you know, we we're talking about children. I know brothers who actually have got their children online reading, uh, you know, the Quran and Hadith and Dars online. And every day they have these classes in their homes with a teacher, with all their children sat about. How brilliant is that? And you're using the same device. I think what it is, is Harun, and I think really, uh, to sum it up really is, and just before we finish, mention, you mentioned the online courses and to our viewers on Madhini channel, www.dawatislami.net on the Dawatislami provides these online courses. There's approximately 32 or 33, I believe, online courses that you can enroll on. And you can enroll on them and you can say, I want a time at 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock at night, whatever, whatever. So wherever you are uh, in the world, there's an opportunity there to enroll on these courses. But it's about getting the right balance of everything. Right? It's about getting right balance of everything, utilizing for what it should be utilized, uh, and hopefully then you'll see the benefit of it. You know, uh, you mentioned earlier on about the fact that, yes, it's using it for the right reasons, but also technology is there to use it for, you know, uh, for, I don't know, for con contacting family. I think what the, what the crux of it is, the crux of it comes back to, I remember one brother, he gives somebody else a, a piece of chewing gum. You'll know this brother. He gave somebody else a piece of chewing gum, and then this piece of chewing gum was also offered to him as well. And he said, what is the benefit in me eating this chewing gum? I went, I don't know about it. He said, there's no benefit in eating. Why should I eat it? That's right. So I think if you apply that philosophy yeah. to social media, if you apply that philosophy to internet, for whatever it is, what is the benefit of me using this right now? Right? If you ask yourself a question, what is the benefit? And if the benefit is there, marhaba. That is the question. I'm not saying you're, you're, you're advocating going cold turkey. You're advocating... Throw but your phones it, it, at the to window, be, yeah. To be fair, it's easier for me to do because I've never done it. Okay. But what I'm saying is, is we need to say is, what are the benefits? Is? And like we said earlier on, we need to get the right balance in our life. And it's a beautiful Madri Pearl. And I think I mentioned it to you, Harumbai, before about what Negrana Shura once said. It was uh, one of the uh, Murkasi Majlis Shura's, Madri Mashras, they, they write up the, the Madri Pools. And they send them to us. And first of all, they send them in Urdu and then they translate it into English. And I remember there was one from probably about four years ago now, Harumbai. And Negrana Shura said that we should divide our time into four phases right, and get the right, and he's talking about getting right, the right balance in your life, yeah? about getting the right balance. And he said the balance in your life, you need these four things. And he's not saying that these four things should be six hours a day, it's just getting them. And it's like he explained that, you know, when you make a, a curry, you need certain ingredients in it. If you don't have these ingredients, it's, it just doesn't work. And he's saying that you need to earn money. You know, everybody that's here, we all need to earn money. Money, you know, it, it is our majburi, mm. right? It's a necessity in life that we need money, but it shouldn't become our purpose in life. He then went on to say that we also need to give our family time. Them are important things that we need to also give our family time. The third thing that Negrani Shura mentioned was that you need to give your own personal mutala time, personal ibadah time, personal worship time, that time that you take out for yourself to improve yourself. For yourself to improve yourself by reading the Quran, for yourself to improve yourself by reading books, for yourself to doing the extra worship, that own personal time that you put aside from your daily routine, that's just for you. That is me time. Yeah. And that me time is used productively. And fourthly, he said, giving that time back. Giving that time back to the community by the work of Deen, by the work of Dawat Islami. And he said that if you get them four things in your life, then you've got the right balance. So and I think... I think social media, be it, whatever you want to call it, internet, whatever you want to call it, all of them things, if they fit into them four, yeah, if you're using, because people might use internet to earn money, hmm? yeah, people might use social media to earn money, people might use the social media to contact family abroad and give them family time where you can't contact them as easily as it used to be, people might use it for their own personal study, people might use it to spread the work of Deen, if whatever you 
use social media for, if it falls into any of them four categories, then I think it's beneficial. Oh, sure. And I think that's what we should realize that, yes, uh, we're not advocating, as he's saying, disconnect your Wi-Fi, no, like, disconnect your internet, disconnect your shows. We're not saying that. What we are saying is, is that you need to ask yourself the question is, what is the benefit of this? And to our parents that are out there, if the benefit for you is that it keeps your children quiet, then you need to look at the adverse effects of keeping your children quiet. If you think that benefit is that, oh, the child's in his room now, I don't need to have to deal with his questions. Because children at a young age, you know children when you go to mm. the room, right? They ask millions of questions, yeah? And they might ask the same question a hundred and one times, and you get fed up with it, but you have to answer them questions. If you think, okay, here's, a, here's a, an iPad, disappear, kid. Yeah, my problem solved now. I can go and, you know, watch TV in peace. Yeah, I can watch football in peace. That doesn't work. Your children need your time, yeah? And going back to what we said earlier on, that it desensitizes our children. When they are playing these certain games on the internet, when they are doing certain things, when they are seeing certain things, you know, when you're seeing killings that are happening, when you're seeing shootings that are happening, when you see people running over, being run over, when you see people beaten up, when you're seeing all these things on social media, it desensitizes you. And it comes to a point where, something that you mentioned earlier on, where people start scrolling and looking for them websites, looking for them pictures, because that's all they want to look for mm -hmm. them, because that's all they're getting a kick out of now. They're not getting a kick out of looking, uh, uh, listening to Hadith. They're not getting a kick out of uh, seeing the sayings of the Prophet. They're not getting a kick out of watching Quran. They're getting a kick out of looking at them images, looking at them videos, and that's where we've got our downfall. Just for those people, because there are people who will be watching Madden Channel who are stuck in that vicious cycle, I would still advocate that like Wasim Bay said, he said, I go through phases where I delete it yeah. and it comes back. And that's just because it takes over your life. If you are struggling with it, try life without it. If you find peace and tranquility or you find that it's taking you away from sin and you, you're in that difficulty where it takes you towards sin, abstain from it because it's not worth it. If you can control it, yes, okay, that's the best of worlds. But if you are weak, like me, I think, I think it's very hard to control. I'll be honest with you. It is hard to control. So you're yeah. coming to my way of thinking. No, no, I agree with you. It is hard to control. I'm not saying, uh, what I'm saying to you is, is we need to learn to control it, right? And if you cannot control it, then yes. Because ultimately, if it's leading to sin, then what is the benefit? Like I said, it's the, if there's a benefit in it, in any of the four things that I mentioned, if you can get any of them out of it, then marhaba. Let me tell you, let me finish up with something a brother said to me once. And it's not just one person. A few people have said this to me. I, I, we were talking about social media, and I said, I don't do any social media, and all we have is a few groups um, for uh, Madni work. And he said, you must have a very peaceful life. Honestly, that's what he said to me. He said, you have none of these headaches that we get every single day of the week. You know, this message has come on, Flan person has said that, he's doing that, he's driving a nice car, that plays in your mind, that plays, he's done this, he's bought that, he's in Dubai, he's there. And he goes, all that, it's too much information. It, yeah, it, over, it crowds your head. It and he goes, you're unaware of everything because you don't do social media. So your life must be peaceful. And that was his words. MashaAllah. Viewers of Madani Channel, you've been watching tonight with Madani Channel. Tonight we've been discussing the topic, uh, the problems <coughs> or the effects of smartphones and the effects of the internet. We're now going to go to our last segment of the Silsila, which is the Madani Pools from the Fazana Madina. Manama magazine. Let your heart shine bright. Let us take you to what is right. Gee. And first of all, um, Khalid Bay, Alhamdulillah, I've got a, uh, a hard copy of it's it. Beautiful, isn't and it? it's beautiful. Honestly, my first impressions were just just nice looking at it. it. Embossed, the quality of oh, it, the, quality the paper amazing. that's used. Amazing. If you just like, can I can I just like flick through and show the oh, viewers like just, it's just, just so they can see. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you know, if I was to present this to anybody from a, a high flying businessman to brothers on the street, I, everybody would just look at this and think, wow. It is. The and quality is amazing. You know, when I saw it on your desk earlier, I thought. You said you, want, you said I want to buy it. <laughs> I, I said, can I have it? <laughs> I said, no, you can't have it. You said, I'll buy said, it. I said, no. You said, no. I, I offered to buy it, but you didn't give it to me. But honestly, it's such a beautiful and a quality before, product. Before you begin with the Madani Pearls from that particular Fazana Madina Manama magazine, this, to all our UK viewers here, is available where you can actually get it delivered to your door. And the English version is £60. The Urdu version is £40. And that's for a full 12-month subscription delivered to your door. And you can subscribe to this. And I advise everybody, one of the... the 
beautiful things about this particular Manama magazine, in fact, all of them, is that you can just pick it up for two minutes. Yeah, pick it up for two minutes and read something. Uh, you don't have to be there for the full 30 minutes or an hour or anything like that. You can pick it up for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm going to have to pull a Harun by away from it now, please. It's beautiful. I mean, <laughs> I just, see just, just looking at that I can content. See, yes, page, I can see that, yes. I mean, there's about there's 40 small topics with little articles on each one. And it's just so amazing. I mean, I, I was just uh, kind of uh, reading. I think I'd want to read that. I, you know, Markets and the Shaitan. Um, you know, Shari rulings pertaining to Islamic sisters. Blessings of Khwaja Gharib Nawaz, Rahmatullahi Cancer. Um, dietary needs. Madni news. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Can I take this coffee no. home tonight? <laughs> you've, got, you've got, we talked about it earlier. You've got a smart device. You can download it yourself. Okay. Right, um, okay, Madhuri Pearls from this week. Madhuri Pearls from this week. I'm going to take a beautiful topic, the reward of a hundred martyrs. Okay. Um, Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala has narrated that the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that the one who will act upon my sunnah at the time of fasad, discord of ummah, will receive the reward of a hundred martyrs. Subhanallah. And it goes on to say that in relation to this blessed hadith, uh, it is stated that the one who will act upon the sunnah at the time of fasad, i.e. at the time when the ummah will be lost in bidda, ignorance, and fiscal fujur, as in sins, will dominate, and we will, rec will receive the reward of a hundred martyrs. Allah so, Allah. you know, like we were discussing earlier, social media, in that sort of era where there's all these distractions, but what? How blessed is that person who uses this uh, opportunity to learn the sunnahs of Rasulullah and to spread them. And to revive them sunnahs. To revive them sunnahs, subhanAllah. And it goes on to say, the reason for receiving this reward is the difficulty which the person acting upon the sunnah at the time will face because of his act of reviving the sunnah and acting upon it. So it would be like uh, martyrs who are martyred in the way of Allah جل, because they are reviving the deen. And this is amazing. What they're saying is that, you know, in the earlier days it was difficult, but when it comes to this time, it's very difficult to have, for example, a beard. You might get called names, you might be looked at, people might frown at you, and it becomes difficult. Islamic sisters, when they were having farda, you know, people may torment them or say things to them. But it's those difficulties that are leading to this amazing reward. And it's, it's just, just, on, just on the topic of the beard, you, um, you're a similar age to me. I remember when I was a kid, the, nobody had a beard. Hmm. Nobody had a beard. And I remember just the was, Imam Sahib at the mosque. Well, there was one person in our town that had a beard, and they called him, and we used to call him Chacha Sufi. Because yeah. I thought that was his name, yeah. right? But again, that sunnah has been revived. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And you know, and it's amazing. And you know, there's, there's something else. Is my Allah Zawajal, um, raised the ranks of all the walis of Allah Zawajal, and especially those in this era who, despite all these evils of the internet and everything else, are fighting hard day and night to revive the sunnahs of Rasulullah Sallallahu And obviously, the, the the prominent example in this current era is Amir al-Sunnah Dawud Barakat I mean, when we grew up, how many people did you see with an Imam Ashrifa? Didn't even know what one was. Yeah. How many I'll be people, honest with you, I didn't. You know, how many people did you see with white libas on, thinking that it's, it's the Aqa Sallallahu Alaihi like the white clothes? How many people did you see who knew what the maswak was or how to use it? Never mind portraying it on the on your chest, saying this, my Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved this, so it's going to take a place next to my heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and these were the things that, um, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Amir al-Sunnah, Dawud Barakat Mulalia, has had the uh, honor and pleasure of, uh, re you know, reviving. Yeah. Reviving, it's amazing. Like you say, I, I can, I can, I, I didn't even know what Imam Mashif was. Beard, like I said, when we were kids, it just didn't exist. Miswak, what was a miswak? I didn't know what a miswak was. Uh, you know, actual, you know, the sunnah of Nikki Ki Dawud, yeah? That, you know, inviting people to the path of righteousness, it was just something that the Imam did on hmm? a Friday. It wasn't anything else. It was no? a Friday job for him, yeah? It wasn't anything else, uh, you know, the, the teaching the deen, spreading the deen, giving Nikki Ki Dawud, that was something that was... Unheard of. We didn't even know, uh, Khalid Bhai, how to recite the Quran properly. And yet, it is the faiz of Amir al Sunnah Dawud Barakat Mulaliyah that today a lot of the brothers in the Madni Mahal of Dawud Islami have not only learned how to 
uh, read the Quran correctly, but are now teaching it to others. And a lot of them are doing it with the jazbah that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the rationale of the Hadith of Mubarakah is the best amongst you is the one who has learnt and taught the Quran. Subhanallah. And you know, and that Madani mindset came in the Madani environment of Dawud Islami. Before we came into this environment, you know, we didn't know how to read the Quran. I remember in our in, in our area, um, there was a, a Madani um, who came from uh, Babu Madina, Karachi, and he was in that area, and he had been in the Madani environment of Dawat Islami, and he started to teach. And at the time, there were six or seven of us he taught, and Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, most of us from that class went spread all the way across the town and had all our class. own classes. And at one point in that particular town, there were over a hundred students from that, you know, one teacher. One teacher. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Any more Madri pearls on, on that topic or is, it, is that the end of that one? Uh, no, no, it isn't. That There's a beautiful article and, uh, you know, it, it goes on. But the, the beauty is as well, it's short and sweet, just over the, those two three. And then you get, the, you know, everything for us begins and ends with uh, Medina. Medina. So the, the, the topic actually starts with Medina and ends with Medina Allah as well Allah. there. And I think um, th there is there are more Madni pearls. But I would say, uh, as you said, Khalid Bay, go down to dawatislami.net, download it. A better still, though. I would encourage all the uh, brothers and sisters and um, get the subscription, monthly subscription. This will arrive through your post. I think it's three pound a month, isn't it? No, I think it's sixty pound a year. Yeah. So that's about twelve, five pound a month. Five pound a month. Five pound, five pound a month, and this beautiful book will arrive through your post. You can gift it to others. You can read it. You can get your children to read it. Just the over English, three pound a month for the Urdu one. Forty pound a month. Ah, uh, yeah, the Urdu one. Yes, that's where I've got that from. Okay. But you know, the English. The beauty of this was, you know, the first time I read it, I thought. This English is really, really, really good. Really, really good. And, it, and the quality easy. is amazing. And the quality is amazing. But no, a lot of the time you get the quality of the actual booklet being good, but the actual content no, is amazing. beautiful though. The content itself is so readable, so interesting as well. You also had a Madani Pearl for us with regards to some sort of uh, health benefits. Yes, there was a, there was a very interesting um, article at the back, uh, which um, foods that strengthen bones, okay, mashallah. Right, at the, right at the back. So it gives you a good flavor of the, it's not just you know all kind of uh, religious things as well, but some practical advice as well. And uh, give us the practical advice. The practical. Advice. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take one. For, it says here, fish is the best food for strengthening the bones. It is rich in vitamin D and calcium. Besides this, it contains omega three, which is considered extremely useful for a healthy heart. Subhanallah. And then it goes on to give us milk and cheese and leafy vegetables and spinach. I won't read all them. I'll let you read all them. But it's, again, I, I know I'm, I'm probably overemphasizing. Look how beautiful that's presented. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Viewers of Madani Channel, you've been watching tonight with Madani Channel. And today we discuss <coughs> the effects of uh, smartphone and the internet. And I think we probably didn't give the topic the justice that it deserves because there is so much that needs to be discussed. We've basically just touched it and scratched the surface. But in scratching the surface, I think we've, we've highlighted to you that these problems exist. And I think as, as viewers out there, we need to realize that this is a problem. Uh, we need to realize that uh, we need to admit to ourselves that it's a problem. I think that's the first problem, admitting that there's a problem. And then we need to be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves, are we really benefiting from this? Are our children really benefiting from this? And at the same time, if we are benefiting from this, what harms are we also occurring? And if them harms are greater than the benefits, then we need to question our use of it. And as Harumbai says that if we are, and, and I agree with him, that if the harm is greater than the benefit, then yes, stop it. We need to stop it. And that should be with anything. That if the if the harm is greater than the benefit, then, then there is no point in having it there. And we need to question ourselves with regards to that. And you need to be honest with yourselves. I can't answer them questions. You need to be sit down with yourself as a family I remember Negrani Shura also saying once that him as a family, they decided that they would put the mobile phones in the other room. They would leave them there on charge. When, when they are as a family, they would sit there. And, and I even, I'm probably just as guilty as other people that there are many times where I'll go home and instead of spending that, that valuable time with my family, I might start looking at my messages. I might check in my messages. Whereas what I should really do is I should check them outside and go inside and put the phone to one side and give that quality time to my family. And I think we all need to be aware of that and we need to realize the the harms of the internet and the harms of uh, smartphones yes there are benefits but look at the harms as well and be aware of the harms as well we mentioned the proverb of the week that bitter pills 
create better results. And I think that's a life message there for all of us that throughout our lives, whatever we do, sometimes there's hardship at the beginning, but the benefits there uh, are there for us to be seen. Short-term pain, a long-term gain. And then Harun Bhai finished with some beautiful Madhuni pearls from our Fazana Madhuni Manama magazine. And my humble request to each and every one of you is please subscribe to it. If you can't subscribe to it, then at least use your smartphone, use your internet, and go on and download from www.dawatislami.net the booklet completely free of charge, many other books available there, total of over 30 languages uh, that the books have been translated in. Use the benefits, use the internet properly, and inshallah, you will see the benefits. Keep watching Madhuni Channel, and inshallah, same time, same place, and next week, inshallah, azawajal, tonight with Madhuni Channel. Salu alal habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad. Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right Let your heart shine bright Let us take you to what is right